विष्णुपादादिकेशातस्त्रोत्रम श्लोका फिफ्टी यस्मावाचो निवृत्ता सममी मनसा लक्षण स्वार्थालाभात्पराथव्यपगम कथन श्लाघिनो वेदवादा ऐल रिपीट दैट स्वार्थालाभात्पराथव्यपगम कथन श्लाघिनो वेदवादा निनंदम स्वसंवधि विमलस्वांत बिंबछायापत्यापि नित्यं सुखयति यमिनो यद्यान्मो नन्वय यस्माच मनसा समम अपि निवृत्ता वेदवादा स्वार्थ अलाभात् लक्षण ईक्षण परार्थव्यपगमकथन श्लाघिन यत् मह निनंद स्वसंवित निरवधि विमल स्वांत संक्रांत बिंबछाया आपत्या अपि यमिन नित्यं सुखयति तत् नह अव्यात् This shloka describes the formless Brahman, that is Vishnu, without a, a particular form. So we'll see the basic meaning, and then uh, add the detailed meaning. Yes, Mahate, that from which watcha her all the words which try to. describe brahman those words manasa samam api even after they occur in the mind and then nivrittaha without really being verbalized they have retreated and then vedavadaha the words which are used in the upanishad statements those words स्वार्थ अलाभात द डायरेक्ट मीनिंग ऑफ दोस वर्ड्स फाइंड इट इम्पॉसिबल टू डिस्क्राइब ब्रह्मन सो दोस वर्ड्स इन द डायरेक्ट मीनिंग कन्वेड दे फॉल शॉर्ट सो दे आर इनसफिशियंट देर फोर लक्षण ईक्षण दोस वेरी सेम वर्ड्स take to the secondary meaning and then parartha vyapagama kathana shlaghina there are other words which are used to praise brahman by negating the meaning of other objects that is basically the words are talking about other objects and then negating them to know brahman further that uh, formless form which is swasamvit means swaprakashah self effulgent and it is niravadhi it is limitless in terms of space and time and object that is desha kala vastu aparichinnah and then nityanandam that which is in the form of eternal happiness and further vimala swanta sankranta bimbachaya apatya api that which is obtained in the vimala very pure mirror like swanta sankranta mirror like mind in the inner self and swanta sankranta means it is obtained in the inner self like a reflection bimbachaya like a beautiful reflection and here apatya api takes the meaning of it is available obtained as a nature of one's self so, apatya takes the meaning of swa anubhutya as the 
Swaswarupa, nature of oneself. And then, where is it available like this? Yaminaha, in the pure minds of the yogis who always meditate. And then, Nityam Sukhayati, such yogis are always enjoying that form, the nature of which is joy itself. Nityam Sukhayati means the nature of that uh, Brahman is uh, everlasting joy. And that joy is experienced in the pure mind of the yogi. Yati Mahaha, such a light of consciousness. Tat Naha Avyat, may that form protect us. Now we'll look at the detailed meaning. In the first 49 uh, shlokas, Bhagavad Padacharya ha, uh, has, he has described the supreme being, that is Brahman, uh, who is the substratum or the cause of this creation in the personified form. That is, the word Vishnu in the title, Vishnu Padadi Keshanta Stotram. In that title, the word Vishnu, for the major part, that is in the first 49 verses, it gives the meaning of Lord Vishnu as one who has the form of a dark complexion and then he is holding different weapons in his arms and he has many divine attributes. That is, Saguna Brahma Swarupa is described. The first five verses describe the weapons. Then the vehicle of Lord Vishnu uh, Garuda is described. And then the Sesha, uh, Sesha, that is Adi Sesha as the couch on which uh, Lord Vishnu is resting upon, that is described. Then Lord Vishnu's consorts, Bhudevi, Shri Devi are described. And then from the dust particles on his feet up to the hair, then the crown and then the whole body of Lord Vishnu uh, in his personified form is very vividly and beautifully described for meditation. Following that, the 49th shloka described the very uh, special manifest forms, avatara, incarnations of Lord Vishnu. Then in this 50th verse, Lord Vishnu as the attributeless, indescribable, nirguna Brahman is described and prayed to. So here the meaning of the word Vishnu is veveshti vyapnoti iti Vishnuhu. It means one who pervades or permeates the entire Jagat, the entire universe, thus becoming the formed and the formless. That Nirguna Brahman is very well known as Vishnu. So this verse is very profound in the sense that just in four lines, the core essential meaning of the subject matter that is the content of the Upanishad has been explained. Let us try to understand the shloka in the light of few Upanishad statements, a few of the Upanishadic uh, statements. The first uh, sentence in this shloka says, Yasmat vachaha nivrittaha Manasa samam api and that evidently refers to Taitriya Upanishad which says Yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa saha. Now before looking at uh, the specific meaning of this sentence, uh, let us go through a brief background that is some understanding of the methodology which is uh, involved in knowing Nirguna Brahman. The very expression Nirguna Brahman means that Lord Vishnu is not an object of knowledge. 
Brahman is not an object of knowledge. So then, what is the Lord like? First, you should be able to see the Lord. Is the Lord available for uh, direct perception to the eyes? That is Pratyaksha Pramana. Is he available? No. So then, uh, does he have some parts so that uh, comparison is made possible? He has no parts to compare. So, Upamana as a means of knowledge is also not useful. Then, you should know uh, Brahman by recognizing his absence, that is Abhava, whereas Bhagavan is Bhava Swarupa, existence itself is Brahman. So, Anupalabdhi as a means for knowing is not applicable here. Then, Lord as Sakshi Chaitanya, that is witness of the absence of any object is also the very same Brahman. So then Anupalabdhi also in the form of a Pramana or means to know Brahman is not useful. Bhagavan exists. Ishwara is there. But if we cannot know him through Pratyaksha Pramana, Anumana Pramana, Arthapati Pramana, Upamana and Anupalabdhi. Then, what are the means of knowledge that we can use to know Him? Brahman can be known indirectly by Shabda Pramana, the words of the Shastra. Only Shastra is a Pramana, means of knowing in the form of words. But then, Taitriya Upanishad says, Yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa saha, which is exactly what this shloka is saying uh, through the words Yasmat vachaha nivrittaha manasa samam api, which means from where words retreat or return along with the mind. And why is that? Because Words can only talk about an object which belongs to a species, jati, or there should be some attribute, guna, which can be described by words. Otherwise, there should be some sambandha, relation, or there should be a kriya, action, or a rudhi, that is, the word should be commonly used for some purpose. Only when any of this is there, words are useful. But then, now the question arises, then what is the use of words if uh, I cannot know Brahman with words? One may wonder. So then, Shastra's words work as a Pramana, means the words work by implication, that is, words have a particular power, Shakti, to give meanings directly. And if that power does not work, that is, if direct meaning is not useful to understand something, then by implication, that is, secondary meaning of the word, one can use to know. And this is mentioned in the shloka as, Swartha alabhat lakshanam ikshamanaha, which means swartha alabhat means the immediate meaning or the primary meaning of words cannot reveal the limitless consciousness, nirguna brahman. Therefore, it is lakshanam ikshamanaha, that is, the implied meaning of words are used to reveal that Brahman. Then, Shastra uses words in another method to reveal Brahman. That is, by negating all that which it is not, but then which has been superimposed wrongly due to ignorance, avidya. This process of negation 
is employed in shlokas like nabhu mirna toyam na tejo na vayuhu na kham nendriyam va na tesham samuha this is part of dasha shloki which is also composed by adi shankaracharya it uh, basically is negating all the grossified form of elements as not brahman then there is uh, upanishad mantra which is also using the same method uh, that is adreshyam agrahyam agotram avarnam etc that is uh, brahman is not the object of sense perception it is not an object of the organs of action it does not belong to any lineage and it does not possess any attribute or colors etc like that words are used to say what it is not essentially this is the meaning brought out by the words that is what it is not and uh, this very same thing is brought out by the words in the shloka as parartha vyapagama kathana shlaghinah these words uh, bring out similar meaning uh, that is negating what brahman is not so then veda vadah the words of the upanishad are to be understood by implication so then further shastra says that the essential nature of this brahman lord vishnu is nitya anandam nitya anandam that is joy or happiness which is everlasting ever joyful or ever happy in other words any happiness that is born of the sense objects is also because of that vishnu alone and then this shloka says sva samvit niravadhi vimala swanta sankranta bimbachaya patya api nityam sukhayati yaminah it means this brahman lord vishnu after a lot of meditation for a length of time and then nididhyasanam contemplation then this lord vishnu is obtained and reflected in the purified minds of yogis purified mind means a mind which is free from likes and dislikes that is raga dvesha that is known as a pure mind so in such purified minds of yogis in the form of swaprakasha self revealing consciousness which lights up everything giving everlasting limitless joy in that way this brahman is obtained in the pure mind and then the shloka ends with the words tat mahaha naha avyat now here mahaha this word refers to lord krishna's words in bhagavad gita where he says yadaditya gatam tejah jagad bhasayate akhilam yat chandramasi yat chagnau tat tejo vidhi mamakam he says that the light or the brilliance which is there in the sun that uh, illumines the entire world and then that light in the moon and fire is my light alone that's what bhagavan says so tat mahah nah avyat would mean may that lord vishnu who is manifest in the form of jyotisham jyotihi that is even the thoughts that illumine everything may that form protect us and bless us so that we may progress in our practice of yoga that is from dharana to dhyana to samadhi in other words may we attain oneness with brahman in samadhi that is in terms of knowledge the meditator is the meditated there is no difference meditator and the meditated 
meditator and the meditated are one and the same. This is the knowledge that is sought for. With this explanation for uh, this verse is concluded. Namaste.